All right, in this video, we're going to find the amount of time that's passed between two different times on two different dates using Google Sheets. Before we look at doing this in a spreadsheet, let's step back, look at this from a high level first. So let's start with a date, let's say February 6, 2023, 5.03 in the morning. And we'll end with February 8th, 2023, 7 p.m. To complete the first day, you'll have 18 hours and 57 minutes. And there's one entire day in between these two dates. So we'll say 24 hours. And the last day has 19 hours remaining. Add those together, we have 61 hours and 57 minutes. But let's look at how to do it in Google Sheets. All right, so we'll just start out with the ending time and the starting time that we had in that example. And these two times are relatively close together. So they're within a few days of each other. And this first technique that we're going to use works pretty well when they're within, let's say, 100 hours. And you'll see why. So let's go over into uh, cell F7 and just say elapsed time. So that'll be the difference between the two. And it's real simple to start. We're going to select cell E29. And we're going to subtract the value, the starting value, in D29. So at this point, I come up with 2.58125. And this already shows a lot of what you run into when you're working with dates and times is that it's just not displayed correctly. That is the right result, but what does 2.58 mean and how are you going to use that? So we'll go back into cell F29. And as I go up here, I don't wanna to forget to mention that you can get a copy of this template yourself for free if you wanna make a copy. The link is in the description so you can follow along. But the crux of what's going on in cell F29 is that it's controlled by the formatting. So we'll go up to format, we'll go to number, and then we'll look at these choices. So it's automatically assigned a number format to it. So it's just guessing at what we, what we want the result to look like. It doesn't know, right? So it's trying to do the best it can. But what we want the result to be is we want it formatted in a duration. So it's not a time of day. A time of day would be 2 a.m. or 3 p.m., right? But the passage of time is specific to this data type down here. And it's shown as 24 hours and one minute to show you that this can go over 24 hours. So it doesn't go to then uh, right past midnight. It's just showing that uh, the hours just keep going, right? So we will select this and then it's going to show the output as 61 hours, 57 minutes and no seconds. So this is the output that you're looking for. Then you're done, right? You have the difference in hours, minutes and seconds. But then at this point, several things can happen. And one of them is maybe you want to show years, months, or days, or a combination of years, months, days, minutes, seconds, etc. So we'll look at a second example here. So we'll scroll down. We'll see a couple of different times here. And the big difference in these is that they're a lot further apart. So we have those 10 years here and two years here. So one way to do this, let's just try to do this the old way that we, it's not old, I guess I just showed you a minute ago, but it's uh, the previous way. And I hit enter and it's 87,000 hours. All right, so the d concept of using the duration format kind of breaks down when it's this long. 87 hours probably isn't very meaningful to you. So it's probably reasonable at this point to for you to want to see the output in years, months, days, and then maybe then the remaining hours. So we'll hit backspace here and we'll talk about the options that you have left. One of them is a pre-built function called date diff and it works really well. It just has a limitation that we'll go over. So we'll type out date diff and it wants a start date. So the start date is D84. The end date is E84 and then it wants the units. So we'll just start out saying years We'll close this off. All right, I see I wanna clear the formatting out here. So we'll go to format and I'll just change it back to automatic. So it's saying it's 10 years in between these two dates. And that's right if you're just looking for years, right? But if you're looking for something more, let's go down to this next one. So we'll copy and paste this first. So that's two years, but there's more to it than that, right? So let's just say that we want to use the years and the days. 
Well, with the date dip function, you can say uh, two years there. So we'll copy this formula from the formula bar so it doesn't change. We'll come up here and paste it. And then if we want to see the number of days left after the two years, you can use YD. So as you're seeing, there's an entire syntax involved with the date diff function. I'll link to a video that explains more about it, but for now, it's just suffice it to say that this unit that we're choosing now is the number of days left after the last whole year. So we'll hit enter and we have two years and two days. Just change the formatting there. So the date diff function can be very useful, but if you're looking for something to be all in one cell and have the flexibility to go all the way down, let's say to milliseconds, I'll show you the last solution here. So we'll go into cell F8 and we'll start up an add-on called time diff. And what this does is that it calculates the entire duration and the units that you specify and writes it all into one cell. So if we want to write the, the output into F88, we'll take this sidebar. So you can directly input the dates and times here if you want, but we're going to say we want to calculate it from the active range. So we'll highlight this range. Actually, we'll do both. So we all have two start times and two ending times here. And let's say we want years, months, and we'll skip weeks for this example. We'll say days, hours and minutes and we're going to calculate that from the range and it's going to write out the results in the cells to the right and depending on what you want to do this may be the best solution if you want to learn more about time diff there's a link in the description you can install it as an add-on in google sheets and give it a try thanks for watching <laughs>